Let's go ahead and knock this out. Off the radar, pick them for week number eight, and we are going to fire this off. We're, we're going to kind of roll through these quickly. Illinois okay. at Penn State. Uh, odds brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. Go ahead and sign up. Use the promo code. You can find it down in the description. Penn State, a 23-point favorite, total of 45.5. Penn State won last year, 56-21. to 21. They have won and covered three straight in this matchup. Uh, Illinois, all the stuff that came out with Brett Bielema and him talking about his players, and there's nobody on the two deep on offensive line that has provided anything to this team, which was really entertaining to listen to, but also can lose you a locker room very quickly. They have been playing hard for him. They've, they're not very good, and we all know that, but he, he said it out loud when most coaches would not. And part of that is why we like Brett, and it's also part of the reason why he just now got back into college football, I think. No, no, no. I think I think you can say that if you've got a relationship with those fans, teams, and I think I think you can't say it to the media if you've never told it to them. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I can. I like, can believe like that. if y'all have, if y'all have talked about this, it's not a secret. Okay, like like if I stepped into the ring with 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 Dante Wilder, like I'm gonna get my ass kicked. I don't. If, if my trainer went out and was like, he's gonna get his ass kicked. Like everyone would be like, oh, he's gonna lose that locker room. Nope. Nope, I'm pretty well aware that the other guy's better than me. <laughs> I think these kids know the guys on, on the other side of the field, in almost every game they play, they're better than them. That's the reason they're at Champagne. That doesn't mean you can't fight hard. That doesn't mean that one out of a thousand you won't win. Uh, it, it just It's just the truth. If he was coming out and saying something that was untrue about his team, then I would have a problem. I got to think he has told them this. I don't think it's going to mess up the locker room at all. Uh, the thing that scares me about this game is, yeah, you and I talked about it. The number of the number of people that are that are wagering on Penn State here, right? It, there are yep. a lot of people on Illinois. I looked; more money is coming in on Penn State than than the number of bets that are coming in on Penn State. So I guess that somewhat evens it up, but it does terrify me that the line was moving the opposite direction. But, man, I think I'm going to go against it anyway. You know, Brett, like you said, a lot of people taking that the the comments as, eh, probably a little cringeworthy if you don't really understand the full scope of the remarks. It, in that situation, man, I wonder if this team doesn't, like, fight like hell this weekend. And with Sean Clifford out, I cannot trust that Penn State offense. I, I oh no! Yeah, yeah I, Penn State's gonna score on defense and special teams, but that that, that may I be don't it. know that they're gonna move the football much, man, because this offense looks bad without Sean. I will uh, I will take Illinois plus twenty three and and not try and trick myself here because I do not trust that Penn State offense un, uh, without Clifford in there. So I'm I'm rolling with the Illini plus twenty three here. What about you? Yeah, yeah, it's too many. It's too many points. I'm one hundred percent with you. It's too many points. I don't. I don't like it. No, I'm going to go Penn State. I know it's against everything I got. I'm just – too many people are on Illinois. There's just too many people there. I got to I gotta play the odds. Okay, okay. I can I can get down with it, which by the way – I don't like that. That's also might be my next head coach. I don't think that's going to happen, by the way. It pro- yeah, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> I, think, I, think it's, I think it's now a two-horse race. Uh, who, who are the horses? I think it's Lane or it's, it's Mel. Okay, okay. I can get down with this. By I think way, Woodward's going to fight like hell to try to get his guy. And if he can't get his guy, I think he's going to be very happy with Mel. So I think that's it. I, that would make sense. Uh, by the way, Chris went 7-5 and five against the spread last week in our pick and I went 4-8. and eight. So Chris knocked yeah, out. Yeah, finally got yeah, above water. You certainly did. Uh, on the season, Chris, 30-42. and 42, I am 35-37, and 37, and that number is getting closer and closer every single week, it feels like. Northwestern at Michigan. Another 12 p.m. Eastern time kick. And our line here, Michigan minus 23 and a half, total of 51. And, brother, I look at all of these stats and whatnot, and and this looks like it should be. My line on it was 20, Michigan minus 20. So I, I can't figure out for the life of me what why this line would continue going up, especially when there are so many bets coming in on Northwestern. There is a real possibility that Michigan just absolutely beats the dog piss out of Northwestern this weekend. This could be very similar to the Nebraska game 
right where Nebraska beat Northwestern 56-7. to Nebraska-Michigan built very similarly. So I, I'm going to roll with Michigan minus 23 and a half here. Northwestern feeling better about themselves after a win over Rutgers last week. But Michigan's a different beast. And I, I will take the Wolverines here. Michigan is absolutely a different beast. And I love the Wolverines. Love them. We, I we, think this weather seems really bad. I think so like, too. I like I like watching Rutgers. I don't think they're good. I think they're interesting. Okay, they, I've never seen a team that does not have an offensive philosophy. They literally just run eighty percent of their offense as trick plays. Like I like it, it's not just we run a bunch of gadget plays. No, their whole offense is gadgets. Okay, I, I find that interesting. I don't think it's good. Northwestern is boring and bad. Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, there's not a lot to like about them right now. Um, now, now and we should have seen this coming, Gary. See, we're too close to this because we love Northwestern and we're friends with those guys. And we're the Westlot guys, and, and we talk to them every day. Like, we're too close to this. Northwestern has never had a first round pick in the history of that damn school, and they had three last year. Like, what are we talking about? How did we not know that that was going to happen? Yeah, oh, they got two. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, they had two, but yes, they. I'm I'm with you. I think we we thought a lot higher of this team when they had Cam Porter, when they had a uh, couple of the offensive linemen. I mean, they it it's been it's been strange, but also I mean, we probably but should all have we've seen... been told about is how much depth this offensive line has. Well, guess what? They don't have any depth at all. You no. lose one guy and you fall to shit. No, they they really do not. They 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 have nothing, and it it pains us to actually say that. So. You know, yeah, it sucks. It sucks, man. Not a not a fan of of that situation, but alas, here we are. So, all right, let's move on to the next game here: Cincinnati at Navy, and Navy a twenty eight point home dog. And this is another one of those gigantic lines and whatnot. And people are all over Navy, but brother, this is another situation for me where I am going to ride with Cincinnati minus twenty eight. The Navy team turned around when. Ty Lavatai, the quarterback, got put into the starting lineup. When he took over after that bye week, this team flipped, and they were actually competitive in games. I think Navy would have covered against Memphis last week had he not gone out of the game. And as soon as he went out, that offense stalled again. Navy was not able to do anything. This Navy team, without him at quarterback, is the Navy team that got beat 49-7 to by Marshall. Uh, Cincinnati yep. is going to run this team. Cincinnati number, let's see, da, 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 number five in defensive success uh, on running plays, and they are number four in EPA per rush on defense. Navy is not going to be able to do anything against this team. Nope. Uh, I'm uh, I'm all over Cincinnati minus twenty eight here. Yeah, there's no doubt. Cincinnati's gonna just, they're just going to keep putting up style points. They're going to keep knocking people out in the first quarter just because they got to show the world. Listen, we're not anything to be messed with, okay? You, you better let us in because we're going to keep huffing and puffing and we're going to blow this house down. Yeah. And Navy, there's nothing Navy can do about it. Navy's good at one thing that's running the football. And Cincinnati's going to take the football and push them backwards. They're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. I don't think there's a scheme in the world that can save them. I tend to agree. Another 12 p.m. Eastern time game. Kansas State heads to Texas Tech. And this, my friend, is a pick em. Now, I made the line Kansas State minus two, uh, but then I start looking at some of these other advanced metrics and whatnot, and, uh, you know, Parker over at CFB-Graphs.com actually has Texas Tech uh, projected to win this game 39-36. to 36. Uh, This one could be interesting, which is why it's a pick em, right? Some people see Kansas State That's as right. a favorite. Some people see Texas Tech. So, really, we're just picking a winner here. I While I see all of these advanced metrics and blah, 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 Kansas State has played a tougher schedule. So if you're just looking at raw numbers, then yeah, you could absolutely see Texas Tech. But I think some people have figured out Texas Tech, and while they do have some matchup advantages here, specifically their wide receivers going up against these Kansas State defensive backs, Kansas State got some playmakers too. Skylar Thompson back in the fold, playing well. I'm going to roll with Kansas State on the road. I The thing that scares me, Kansas State number 112 in EPA per pass on defense and Texas Tech number 32 in EPA per pass on offense. If they are able to throw the football on Kansas State, they can make up points in a hurry. But I, I trust Kansas State to be able to get stops here. So I'm I'm going to ride with Kansas State to be able to get the win. We'll go ahead to head here. I, I'll take the Houston. Uh, Houston I, I'll take, I'll take uh, uh, Texas Tech. 
Tech Tech's been wildly inconsistent, which is very consistent with this college football season. But when they're on, they're real good. Nope, yeah, yeah. You're, and uh, so I, I, you're you're right about that. I mean, at Texas Tech, they're they are very volatile. But if you look at their overall numbers, they are number nineteen in offensive uh, EPA margin. <laughs> And defense is not as bad as Kansas State's defense has shown. Now, Texas Tech hasn't had to play Oklahoma or anything yet. But, yeah, this I, I see where you're coming from on this. This is – I could see if Texas Tech gets rolling, they could absolutely win this game. Yeah, that's, and that's all it is, is. I just think, you know, like I've already said it. I'm gonna yeah, say they're, it. they're at home. When they're, when, they're, when, they're, when they're on, they're tough to beat. Yeah, so. especially at home. So, again, it's another one of those games. Matt Wells needs it. I feel like I'm talking to myself into Texas Tech. I'll, I'll stay on Kansas State just so that we can go different here. But, yeah, I, I see I see where you're coming from. Next game up, we have got Syracuse headed to Virginia Tech and the Hokies a three-point favorite. You want to talk about desperation mode and, and a must-win. This is a 12.30 p.m. Eastern time game on the ACC network. Or no, no, no. This is actually like a regional sports network. Like, they have been relegated to only the regional networks here. Uh, Virginia Tech needs a win in the worst way. Total is uh, 46 here. Again, odds brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. Uh, brother, if I look at the numbers here, the only thing Syracuse can do is run the ball. Now, they were able to do it against Clemson. But uh, Virginia Tech, they don't really give up a bunch on the ground. So I I, I tend to believe, you know what? I take that back. I've looked at that stat wrong. Uh, Virginia Tech is number 14 in EPA per pass on defense. They're number 100 in EPA per rush. Man. All right. So my line on this was actually Virginia Tech minus four. That's what it opened up at. It's already come down. Man, I put Virginia Tech minus three. Like I, I like I'm gonna take Virginia Tech, I thought. But man, I think I might go Syracuse here. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna switch my pick. <laughs> I'm gonna switch it. I'm gonna so, take Syracuse. So let me let me tell you, this is the dead ass game that I don't want anything to do with. Because <laughs> both of these coaches I like, but neither one of them have done anything impressive at all in a really long time. Like Yes. It, I, I just can't get behind any of them at all. Abatek has better players. There's no doubt about it, okay? But I would take Botek. I'm going to take Botek at home. I don't like it. I just – I would stay as far away from this game as possible. Yeah. I, I think neither one of these teams could be trusted. I wouldn't trust them with one nickel of mine. Yeah, if, if you want to see our official plays, go to the BetUS show and go to the SBR show, uh, Chris's BetUS show. I'm sorry, Chris's SBR show will be on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So uh, go and check those out. Those those will be the official plays. We do pick them off the radar, pick them every week, just to have a little fun so that we can actually talk college football on our own show. Uh, the next game up here, this is, uh, this is another one that, that could be really weird. And that would be a 3 p.m. Eastern time game. Wisconsin at Purdue. Purdue a three and a half point dog. Total of 40 and a half. Wisconsin has won 14 straight in this matchup. Purdue minus two in turnovers. Wisconsin minus 11 in turnovers. Just ridiculous. This is interesting. Purdue overall, like if you're looking at net points per drive overall, Purdue is number 31, Wisconsin number 60, uh, because Wisconsin's offense is awful. They are in the bottom 30. They are number 105 on offense, but they're number 14 on defense. On the other side, Purdue can make some things happen on offense. They're not great, but they're number they're number 64 in net points per drive on offense. They're number 11. They actually have a better efficiency defense than Wisconsin does, which kind of surprised me. But when you see what George Karloftis was able to do against Iowa last week and that defense, I, it makes it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. At three and a half is just too much here. I'm going to take Purdue plus three and a half. The, the world seems to be on Wisconsin this week for some reason. It's like 75% of the bets on Wisconsin, and I don't get it. I don't get it. I, other than the fact that the trends all say take Wisconsin, this is a different team. So what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a wrong team favor. I, I know it sounds weird to say when you look at the uniforms, but if we took all these guys' uniforms off, and, and we just measured them and graded them for, for what we've seen them do this year and not what their granddad, granddad did 10 years ago, like, then we would we would absolutely have Purdue be fake. Yeah. yeah, we absolutely would. 
It uh, it does not make sense to me, but alas, here we are. 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. This is another weird one. BYU heads to the Palouse against Washington State. Uh, Washington State, a four-and-a-half-point underdog right now. Of course, we talked about Nick Rolovich. They are missing five coaches overall, four assistants, and one head coach, of course. Total of 56 and a half. Another one that I'm going to stay away from because the, What's the line you got four and a half right now. Okay. So I, if you look at the advanced metrics, Washington State should actually be favored in this game. They're on a three game winning streak. You got to figure out what the motivation for the team is, right? Are they are they pumped about this? They're going to go out and win one for Rolo, win one for uh, Dickert, the uh, the new interim head coach, or. Does this team just kind of fall apart when they don't have their position coaches and their offensive coordinator calling the plays and all that good stuff? I, I The only way that I can go here is BYU minus four and a half. I think BYU needs to get up off the mat. This is the perfect spot to do it against a team that is in disarray. So I'll take the Cougars minus four and a half here. You're staying away from this game. I am going all in on this game. I think BYU beats the hell out of them. I think BYU is far better football team far better. I think this team it was Kazoo, Washington State was all team. All team. Okay? That everything we know about Rolovich and that style of offense and everything else, it's it's all coaching and game planning and scheme. None of these guys are highly talented. None of these guys are, are the best in the country at anything that they do. And they are a hundred percent a product to scheming. It's not just you lost Rolo. You lost Rolo in every assistant coach that matters. That, sure. There's nothing these players are going to be able to do. They're just not. BYU's going to come in. They're going to run it all over them. Yeah. Okay, I can, I can buy that. I can buy that. Moving on from there, Western Michigan at Toledo. Toledo, a one-and-a-half point underdog at home, a total of 54-and-a-half. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this. Toledo, under Jason Candle, uh, great recruiting classes, all that good stuff. They cannot get it done on the field. This Western Michigan offense is absolutely rolling here lately. Not going to spend long on this one. I'm going to take Western Michigan minus the one and a half, even on the road, uh, even with the talent disadvantage. They are the significantly better coach team. Okay, I'm I'm going to do something weird here, but I'm going to take Toledo only because the Mac is insane. And I just don't know anything that's going on there. And so there's no logic that can be had for what's happening at the Mac. True. And so, yeah. No, I'm it just, makes I'm it makes take the home sense. team catch the point because if you paid any attention at all to Max in football, you you have no clue what's going on. You just don't. So, the, uh, the, the advanced metrics would have this game actually Western Michigan 18 and Toledo 10. I, it's just weird to look at. It's it's so it's so incredibly strange to see this from a team in Toledo that had a bunch of returning production, had it has it has multiple NFL guys on their team, and they cannot seem to get it together. And yet, this will probably be the game where they get it together <laughs> and and cost me a win here. So it it does make sense. I uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, let's move on. 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Boston College heads to Louisville. Louisville currently a six-point favorite over Boston College. And a week ago, this line may have been a pick, but Boston College looked so bad against NC State, they got power rated so low uh, that they just, I mean, they kind of fell out of this one. A total of 57 here, Boston College with Dennis Grossell is not great on offense. They're just not. And once people got film on him and they, they figured out what he could do, they were able to shut him down. I don't know that Louisville's defense has that capability. So I expect Boston College to be able to make some plays to stay in this game. I don't know that they can win outright at Louisville, but I think Boston College can stay within this number, within six. So I'll, I'll take BC plus the six here. So I'll go Louisville. I'll lay the points. I don't like betting against BC with, with that many points, but I think Louisville is starting to find themselves. I think they play really, really well at home. And uh, Satterfield's got to got that team believing. Uh, I, I think Louisville is going to be excited. Is this weekend the weekend they're they're doing Lamar Jackson's jersey? Or is that later in the year? That might be this weekend. Yeah. So, I think, so I think that crowd's right. going to be full then. I mean, they'll sell that place. If it's this weekend, whatever game that is, they're going to sell it out. 
so that 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 that's an extra couple thousand people in the stands that are, that are going to be you know excited and crazy and wild for the game. So I, I just I, I think Satterfield has them rolling. I think Cunningham's one of the best players in the country. Love watching him, and and yeah, I, I'll take them. You know what? I bet it's not this weekend because the Ravens have a home game against the Bengals. And there's no, there's no chance yeah. this weekend if the Ravens play on Saturday. I, I bet Sunday. it's, I bet it's a bye week. Whenever, whenever the Ravens have the bye week, yeah. but either way, that's right. Louisville fans are, are bought a little bit back into this season because they have been playing well as of late. So that, that, that's not going to account for a sellout, though. No, 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 definitely not. But it, it could, no. it could mean a cover for you. So next game on the board, we're moving to the night slate here, and our first one up for the nightcap, which weird schedule this week. All of the games are done. Like the last game kicks off at 7.30 Eastern time. There's the the Hawaii game, but either way, Nevada at Fresno State, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Fresno, a three and a half point favorite. We already talked about it a little bit in the preview. Total of 63 and a half. Uh, remind everybody again, Bet US where the game begins. They provide the lines every week. So go ahead and sign up for them. There's a link in the description. Uh, you can use that promo code, get 125% deposit bonus. You uh, Nevada is a three and a half point dog here, and my numbers actually had Nevada as a one point favorite. When you dive into it a little more, Fresno, like Jake Hayner and Carson Strong, are basically the exact same person. Like the the, the numbers are almost identical. It's it's really crazy to look at. The thing that worries me is Fresno has a better defense than Nevada does. Right, I. Yep. I came into this thinking this is easy, this is wrong team favored, and it's really not. The the Nevada offense is not as the Nevada offense is not as good as the Fresno defense, which is maybe a, a bit surprising. And with that said, I still trust in in having Carson Strong who I think I think is the better quarterback. He doesn't have the flash highlights and everything. But overall, just a better quarterback. I trust Carson Strong here. I think that he can cover that three and a half. This feels like a field goal game one way or the other, so I'm going to count on the hook to save me. Uh, but I can 100% see Nevada winning this game outright. So I, I will take the Wolfpack plus three and a half here. I'll take the home team. I'll take the home team. I like Fresno. I do think Fresno is better than them. I, I think Fresno is a better football team overall. I think they're more complete, defensive, offensive. And, and so I'll, I'll take my chances. I don't like the hook. I do think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a super fun game. I'm excited about it. And give me the Bulldogs. Yeah, I can I can see it. All right, we got two more. 7 p.m. Eastern time. UTSA going on the road where we say weird things happen all the time. And that would be at Louisiana Tech. Ruston, Louisiana. Strange things happen on Saturday nights in Ruston. And Louisiana Tech, a seven-point home dog here, total of 59.5. And, and this is another one of those situations where I, while, while some teams may end up running into problems with Louisiana Tech in Ruston, we saw it with SMU, we have seen it with a bunch of other teams throughout this season, I, I tend to trust a team that does not rely on anything gimmicky or anything like that. UTSA is just a strong-ass football team. And they've got all of the hype about going to the American Athletic Conference this week. They are going to be pumped to go out and get a win and continue that winning streak. They finally got ranked in the top 25. Uh, I think the the momentum will continue with UTSA, with Sincere McCormick, all that. At just basic number overall, EPA play or EPA per play margin, UTSA number 16 in the country and Louisiana Tech number 97. The more consistent team is UTSA. I'm going to take them to cover the seven. My line on it was actually nine. I think there's value here with it being only a touchdown. So all of that's right. I, I actually think I actually think there's a little bit of snake bite going on when you get teams that have never been ranked in the top 25 or something like that, and they get ranked. That I don't know that this is historical data on this, but I think that following week they don't play great. Like, and maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe maybe I just made that up. Maybe I just think that's a thing, and and, and it's all fictional. But I, give me give me lot tech and the point, and just okay. hope that it it's a close game. I, I, I'm with you. I can see where you're coming from. It all makes perfect logical sense. Last game on the board before we go ahead and and climb out of here. Uh, we have got 
7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, NC State. A three-and-a-half-point favorite on the road at Miami. Total of 53. Miami, of course, went through all kinds of different mess leading up to last week. Derek King out for the year. They got multiple guys out for the year. They are kind of moving into their youth movement. Manny Diaz looked madder than hell when they lost to North Carolina last week. He That was one of the most cringeworthy moments I've ever seen with Mac Brown laughing and whatnot and Manny just being completely pissed and Mac wouldn't let go of his arm. It was really strange. Uh, but this is Miami's a, a mad football team. Maybe they're tired of being embarrassed. I don't know. But I, I will tell you this. To this point, NC State, maybe outside of Alabama, this will be the best defense that, that Miami has played. And I think it shows up on the box score. I think NC State covers this three and a half. I don't trust Miami as far as I could throw them. So I, I will certainly, certainly take NC State to cover the three and a half here. Okay. We agree on that. Before we get there, before I, before, I don't have anything else to say on the game. We agree. I like NC State. I think they're awesome. Do you think NC State's defense is better than Michigan State's defense? I just got to ask that question. I think right and now. And maybe they right, are. Maybe right, maybe all the analytics say that, and, and, and I think they're comparable. I think they're in the same conversation. I don't know that I would have definitively said that, but, but I don't know the data. I don't know the analytics, so I don't know. I think right now, uh, yes, they are. Absolutely. Because uh, I will say this. I think NC State – at the beginning of the season, was was really good on defense, and then they lost two of their best defenders, and they have, over the last few weeks, found a way to to be even better on defense. So I'm, yeah, I'm I'm all in on this. I mean, they are they are okay. really really good. Well, I've been saying I think they're the best team that comes. So. Yeah, now they're they're number nine in defensive success rate allowed. Like it's. It's pretty insane. Like, their offense is not, as far as numbers go, offense not great, but I do trust Tim Beck and Devin Leary to be able to put up points here. So I, I do think that NC State is currently a better defense than than what they faced in Michigan State. Okay. I was just curious about that. So, okay. We can talk about something else. <laughs> All right. So you're agreeing NC State, right? Yeah. No I, doubt. Yeah, there's there's not a single number on the board that that could give you Miami. There's not a lot you could ever give me to make me want to bet on on uh, Miami right now. I tend to agree. I tend. I don't. To I don't agree. know. Like they would literally have to be like I don't know a field goal game against Utah. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Is there anything else that uh, that you want to hit, or do you want me to uh, let you go and I'll end the show? No, man. That's it, brother. I appreciate it. Have fun. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Talk to you later, buddy. All right. So that is going to wrap up the Friday edition of the show. We appreciate everybody that joined us. Let me go ahead and give you the rundown again. WinningCuresEverything.com is the website to go ahead and check it out. Uh, Along with that, the show is brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. You can sign up using the promo code NCAAF2021. Get you 125% deposit bonus up to $2,500. And my friends, I can't stress this enough. It is sportsbook exclusive, and it's a hell of a deal. You need to go take advantage of it. There's a link in the description. You just hit that link. It's going to toss the promo code in there for you on sign up. Very easy to do. So go check it out. Check out Chris's SBR show Saturday morning. Check out my BetUS show on Wednesdays and Thursdays. You can go watch the archived version of it, of course, over on the channel. But subscribe to both. Make sure that you can join us live because we have one hell of a time doing it. We certainly appreciate everybody that has been here with us today, of course. Uh, Share the show out. Tell your friends. and Jump into the comments, of course. And make sure and like the video. That helps us out quite a bit. We are ever so closer to our goal of 5,000 subscribers by the end of football season. We're almost to 4,700. So, if you can do us a favor, make sure you are subscribed if you're watching this and you're not already. We still have like 70% of our viewers that are unsubscribed. So, if you're watching this and you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button for us. It helps us out in ways that you would not even believe. With that said, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And hopefully, all of you tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.